blows my mind that this mushy, pale blob of dough becomes a crisp, golden loaf of bread after you bake it in the oven. It's not a good example of transubstantiation, but I suppose that bread is. I'm Father Kevin, and this is going to be some really delicious bread. And you're watching The Groban Explained. The anaphora is, no pun intended, the bread and butter of the Holy Grubana. It is the central point of the liturgy. The Greek word anaphora means lifting up or offering, signifying the offering of the bread and wine being brought up to the Madbaha to become the body and blood of Jesus. The anaphora is split into four segments called gahantas. The first gahanta begins as the celebrant comes to the Madbaha from the Bema. At the Madbaha, the celebrant asked the community to pray for him that in spite of his unworthiness and sinfulness, that God will receive the sacrifice of the Qurbana. And in the most solemn form of the Qurbana, the celebrant makes his request three times, emphasizing his need for grace and the prayers of the community. Within each Gahanta cycle is a Kushapa prayer. Each Kushapa is a prayer that asks God for mercy for his sins, that through the offering of the Holy Gurbana, our sins may be wiped away. The Gahanta prayers that follow the Kushapa give praise and thanksgiving to God for His goodness, the Eucharist, His great and mighty deeds, and for the salvation of our souls. During the first Gahanda is the rite of peace. After blessing the people, the celebrant turns at the Madbaha to give peace to the altar servers who then bring it down from the Madbaha to the congregation, where it is exchanged among them. If you're not thinking about it, it can be easy to miss the significance of this moment. Peace comes from the risen Lord, the source of peace, which is signified by the peace coming down from the Madbaha to the congregation. This is also a call back to Matthew 5.23, where Jesus tells his disciples to go back and forgive his brother before returning to make his gift. This is an expression of the unity between the people, of the peace between us. At this point, the dialogue prayer between the celebrant and the people takes place. This prayer helps the congregation to partake in the sacrifice of the Qurbana as the celebrant and the people proclaim the mystery of the Holy Trinity in the Holy Qurbana. In fact, when the celebrant says, let your minds be on high, he is inviting the people to raise their heart and emotions to heaven as we enter this core of the Eucharistic celebration. And what better way to raise our minds to heaven than with the hymn of Hosanna, where together with heaven and earth, we praise God with one voice. When Jesus gave us the gifts of his body and blood at the Last Supper, he gave thanks to God for the gifts of bread and wine, blessed them, broke them, and gave them to his disciples. These prayers recall that moment and remind us of the significance of this moment, that the person of Jesus, body, blood, and soul divinity are being given to us on the altar in the Holy Qurbana. That is the bread and butter of the Holy Qurbana. You know what I was wondering? Why do we repeat prayers in the Qurbana so often? I mean, not like the same prayers, but like the four Kahantas, right? Where we're asking for the intercession over and over. I can't even begin to count the number of times we refer to God as holy. I really feel like we can trim it down for the efficiency. Actually, the reason that we repeat so many prayers is not because we're trying to get God to remember anything, but it's to remind ourselves to enter more deeply into the experience of prayer. Yeah, but does it mean anything that we repeat the prayers so many times? Yeah, I mean, think about the Gospel of John, when Jesus tells Peter three times, do you love me? I mean, with the repetition of prayers, we're able to draw more deeply into the presence of God, and it's a symbol of eternal worship. The final prayer of the anaphora is the epiclesis. 
epiclesis is a Greek word which means invocation. And in the epiclesis, the celebrant invokes the Holy Spirit upon the sacrifice of the Kurbana that he may bless it and sanctify it because it is the Holy Spirit who transforms the bread and wine into the body and blood of Jesus. Many church fathers consider the institution narrative the seed which the epiclesis fertilizes. It's the final moment in the transformation of the bread and wine into the body and blood of Jesus. Just as the sacrifice of Jesus was completed in his resurrection by the Holy Spirit, so too the sacrifice on the Madbaha is completed by the descent of the Holy Spirit upon the offerings. Oh, and Jesus, who gave his life for the whole world, continues to give his life for us ever in the present through the Eucharist. And it's in our liturgy that we get to experience this gift over and over again. And now, we prepare to receive the whole person of Jesus in the Eucharist.